make your own angel numbers. Now, this video might be slightly controversial for the mere fact that a lot of spiritual niggas love the idea of angel numbers. But until you make your own angel numbers, you cannot be the god of your life. Now, as you can see, we have our lovely angel over <laughs> Our lovely angel over here and I'm laughing because AJ said that if this popped up he'd be shitting himself. Now this is an angel and you guys need to stop making fun of my drawings. I'm not an artist. I'm here to give knowledge. So we are going to help you create your own angel numbers for the mere fact that until you redefine the meaning of your reality you aren't the god of your life. That's a bar. Make sure to write that down. Now you already know how we do it. Start taking notes and make sure you're writing them down. Let's get to it. Somebody commented, can you give your subscribers the N-word pass? Nigga, have you lost your mind? Have you gone bonkers? Have you lost your marbles? I don't know what you think this is. I don't know what you think this is. How do you even have the audacity to ask me that? Anyways, let's get to it nonetheless. Oh guys, there is also a job um, position opening up to be my whiteboard wiper. Um, the criteria is you have to be jobless enough to actually complain about my whiteboard and how I clean it. Now, <clears throat> all jokes aside, focus now. The first thing that I have to tell you, and this is slightly controversial, but just let me land. You're going to get some. You're going to get some. Somebody actually said I should say pause after that. I don't think I'm going to say a pause for that one. Now, here's the controversial thing, but it's so controversial that it should give you a particular light bulb moment when I fully explained what it is. So just stay with me now. Life has no meaning. Now, at first glance, this sounds almost apathetic and atheistic in its conception, but this is actually the best thing ever. This is the best thing ever for the alchemist who has the ability to transmute their reality to however they want. Life has no meaning. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying life has no value because life does have value but life has no meaning and it's not until we fully deconstruct the sentence that's in front of you that you're going to be in a position to properly transmute your reality because whether you realize this or not you, the world is giving you meanings of so many things that doesn't even make sense for example if it's raining people are upset and they're like oh it's raining if you allow the rain the external to dictate your internal that's a very very small that's a very, very small microcosm of an entire ma macrocosm of what happens on a large scale. If you're allowing something as small as the rain to be able to dictate your internal state, then how many things that you're unaware of are dictating your internal state? Pause on the dictating. Now, when I say life has no meaning, what I'm saying is this, and this actually taps into one of the most ancient laws in a sense, one of the ancient hermetic laws. And if you guys ever realize, you know, when I'm doing these kind of little breakdowns, I always revert back to these seven hermetic principles because guys, one thing that I want to reiterate, please do not get caught up in strategies and techniques. Niggas are always saying, hey, this is the best way to do vision wars. This is the affirmation that will change everything. Oh, this is the secret protocol that you need to do this. And what you need to realize is that techniques and strategies are things that it's almost equivalent to building a house on sand. It's not going to help you. What you need to focus on are the core principles that govern the universe. And that's always going to be the seven hermetic principles. So what was I saying? To more explain, to explain more, sorry, the statement that I said earlier that life has no meaning, I'm going to have to take you to the hermetic law of polarity. Now, looking at polarity, you have to understand another way of conceptualizing polarity is duality. But a much simpler way of conceptualizing this is what is called separation. Now, you have to understand that within our third dimensional realm, we are constrained by a group set of particular illusions, one of them being separation. 
Separation is the idea that things are separate to you, whether that's people, whether that's conditions, whether that's circumstances that play out in your life. You have to understand because we operate within the physical plane and the physical plane is directly prone to the illusion of separation. Your mind, your ego has been conceptualized to perceive things as separate to it. But this is one of the deadliest illusions, probably the deadliest illusion throughout the entire universe. Because the moment that you see yourself as separate from people, you don't understand how you co-create people. You don't understand how the masks that people show you, the masks that you've given them. And I'll spend an entire video breaking that down. You don't understand the conditions that you go through in your life because you see them as separate to you. You don't see the circumstances that go on in your life. And I said this in my last video, there's nothing more dangerous than seeing separation between your mind and reality because they are one. But when I say your reality, I don't think it's really hit your mind to the extent that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people that you come across, the circumstances that play out in your life, the events that play out in your life. Every single thing is directly interconnected to your mind. Now, going back to my statement above of life having no meaning, what you have to understand is this. The meaning that we often give things is through labels. We say, hey, you know, this is good, this is bad. We say, hey, this is positive, this, this is negative. But what you have to understand is, our conception of good or bad is directly interconnected to the law of polarity and duality. And here's the thing about polarity. Polarity only exists within the third dimensional realm. What I'm saying is separation doesn't exist as you ascend to the higher planes of existence. So as we transcend the third dimensional realm, our physical plane, our reality, there is zero separation, which means nothing can be labeled. The fact that we can label things as good or bad, saying something is you know good, bad, positive, negative, that is directly interconnected to split. That is directly interconnected to separation. If separation doesn't exist outside our third dimensional realm, then that means our conception of life, our ego's desire to categorize and give qualities to things that happen in our lives is nothing more than it exercising the illusion that it's fallen into, which is separation. That was a bar. Make sure you write that down. I say all of that to say polarity, duality, separation. The fact that we give life meaning and we say, oh, fuck, this, this is good, this is bad. The moment that you begin to splitting things into two, you're falling into separation. Once you understand that separation doesn't exist outside our third dimensional realm, then the things that we give meaning to inherently have no meaning because everything is one. Now, most people live their lives, like I said, seeing rain nigga, and being like, oh, it's going to be a bad day. They see Mondays and they're like, oh, Mondays are going to be a bad day without realizing that through labels in particular, labels are extremely dangerous and they're extremely dangerous because typically when we give things labels, there is an inherent level of emotion in there. And that emotion is energy emotion, which gives off a freak, uh, a, a vibration, which then multiplies and gains energetic momentum to become a frequency, which then becomes a reality. So walking around in your life and giving meaning to things and saying something is good or bad, you're falling for an illusion because there is no good or bad, unfortunately. And yes, that is something that's going to take your mind a while to get into the swing of understanding because it's it's spent so long characterizing things as separate. You know, there is no such thing as rich or poor, so on and so forth. These are things that only exist within our third dimensional realm. And so long as you're stepping by eyesight and not mind sight, you're falling for the same illusion that religions attempt to convey esoterically, right? If we take the devil, for example, the devil, right? The world around the devil 
the illusion is what he's fallen into it's what he believes ought to be that matters that's what happens when you step by eyesight and not mind sight this is what the bible talks about when it says to be absent from the body to be absent from the conceptions of being trapped and confined by the third dimensional realm and to be present with the Lord, to elevate yourself above the illusions of reality. There is no separation. There's no separation between me and AJ. Our separation only exists within this third dimensional realm where he is a Jamaican guy who wants to be a Zimbabwean and I'm a Zimbabwean that loves being Zimbabwean, so on and so forth. Now, I say all of that to say, this sentence should start to make more sense now. He's giving me death stares. <laughs> this sentence should make more sense now. The meaning that we give to life, the labels that we give to life is nothing more than the ego wanting to exercise and make sense of things that unfortunately it can't make sense of because these are things that go outside our third dimensional realm, our reality. Anything that you give meaning to really and truly has zero meaning. It's just oneness. It's just oneness. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. So bear in mind, I'm not saying life is valueless. I'm saying life has no meaning. But... That's not entirely true. That's not entirely true. You're going to get something. Just wait. Let me explain. Now, I know you lot think AJ is fake and he's not real, but as you can see, he bought me a um, new whiteboard eraser. Now, I know there's going to be some funny nigga in the comment who's like, oh, he bought that for himself. No, he literally bought it for me. Now, I can't lie, this, this angel number stuff makes me sick. Somebody said, why do you hate spiritual niggas so much? Since you want to know why I hate spiritual niggas so much, let me tell you, actually. I hate anybody that makes anything their personality. Period. And a lot of spiritual people make spirituality their personality. But that's an illusion in of itself because the word personality comes from the word persona. The etymological origins of the word persona is mask. So these spiritual niggas that you see, you know, lotioning themselves in sheer butter and putting sea moss in their face and being plant-based and walking on grass barefoot and sun gazing and saying grand rising goddess, watermelon, muth en and whatever. It's just the personality and you can judge the extent of their spirituality by their reality. You should always pay attention to that as opposed to what they're showing you because a lot of niggas can talk a good game. Trust me, the reason why I still say nigga and I still say pause and all of this stuff is because I don't care how you perceive me. I truly don't. What I care for is that you're taking this information to be able to practically use it in your life because as I always say, spirituality without the ability to control your reality is vanity. It's just, it's just a personality. Like, come on, man. Like, like, come on, man. Just be normal, man. Now, I said to you earlier that I slightly lied when I said life has no meaning. So let me explain what I meant. Life has no meaning other than the meaning you give it. And that's the truth of the situation. And the reason for this is because one of the most unrecognized tools in your arsenal as an alchemist, somebody seeking to enter their des desired reality, is... Your perception. Now, the way the world gets away with keeping people trapped mentally, so they trap themselves mentally and then they self-justify it, is by making sure that their perception is always working against them. 
And I say that to say, if your perception doesn't serve you, it's just there to control you. I'll give you an example. Rain means it's a bad day. How the hell does that serve you? It does nothing more than control you. Because once you take on the idea, which bear in mind, there are no truth in reality other than what the subconscious mind accepts as truth. I repeat, there are no truths in reality other than what the subconscious mind accepts as truth. And the reason for that is because you're, you don't, how do I say this? Hmm. There's 8 billion people on the planet, but there's 8 billion worlds. One planet, 8 billion worlds. Because the world that you live in is completely determined by the frequency you're in. Niggas are worried about the CIA and the FBI hiding things from them. You should be worried about what your mind is hiding from you based upon the frequency you're in. That's a bar, write that down. For the mere fact that your perception creates what I call the perception projection loop, your projection. Which then feeds back into this. Now, what do I mean by that? Take the concept that I just spoke about. Somebody seeing that a Monday, oh, Mondays are the worst. Niggas love saying that. I never understood it. I, I never understood it. But Mondays are the worst. So Monday comes with this preconceived pause. Monday comes again, pause with this preconceived notion that it's inherently going to be a bad day. The day is going to drag. Things are going to go wrong. It's just going to drain you. And it's just not going to be a good day. So you wake up on Monday. You go about your day. Shit starts going left. Shit starts going left. Things are terrible. Things are dragging. You're watching the time. You're like, oh, Mondays are the worst. Why? Because the way that you perceive something feeds into the projection. And when I say projection, I mean projected into your reality. And this is how they get people trapped in a loop because now it's a loop. And you know the way the loop keeps you sustained? By giving you a drug that niggas are high as hell on. You're right. Niggas love being told they're right. Some stupid nigga will put in my comments, watch when Jesus comes back. And I'm like, you're right, man. And he's like, oh, no. Nah. Yeah, I think I like you. Yeah, I can see that you see sense. Jesus ain't coming back. Christ is. In fact, Christ ain't coming back. Christ is already here. Philippians chapter 2, 5 to 11. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus who found it not robbery to be one with God, to be equal with God. But that's for another topic anyways. But this is the drug that you get hooked on. Because when that Monday comes around, pause again, and it's a terrible day, you're like, oh, see, I just knew Monday was going to be a bad day. You want to be right so bad that you're destroying yourself. I want you to think about that. Because once again, if your perception doesn't serve you, then the one thing that it wants to do, my friend, control you like neo said in closer she wants to own me and that's what it is quite literally let's take another example of perception rain oh, raining is gonna be a terrible day niggas believe that rain is inherently bad because they've given meaning to something that has no meaning remember meanings only exist within our third dimensional realm. But if you want to live on an elevated plane, right? If you want to be able to transform your reality, then you can't live in the same world as everybody else. Make sure you write that down. For the mere fact that you need to be absent from the body and present with the Lord to be living by mind sight and not eyesight. And I know there's going to be one stupid nigga who's going to screenshot me doing that. It's going to say, oh, he's Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> Anyways... Anyways, rain. Starts raining. People are like, oh man, this is terrible. This is terrible. They're driving. They're like, this is terrible. They're getting rain on. They're like, oh, this is terrible. Now they've attributed meaning to something. And remember what labels have. Labels have an inherent level of emotion. Emotion is energy emotion. Energy emotion has an energetic vibration. That vibration compounds eventually and turns into a frequency. That frequency then turns into a reality. That reality turns into something that is accepted. And then they're told, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. And I'll show you how this perception projection loop 
you know, gets you down more more than you even realize. You know, somebody said that <clears throat> something that I recommended that re really healed their anxiety. So I only think it's right that I share it with you guys too, you know, if that's something you're dealing with. And that is Bobby Schmurder and Rowdy Rebel Computers. It's a song. That song, that song might even heal you. It might even heal you. So I suggest you go listen to that. I actually made AJ listen to that just now. You know, when I say this, it makes it sound like I'm really just, like I'm just playing it by myself. And you want to show them someone's exists? You want me to just call it? Yeah. Guys, he got a trim just for you lot. Of course it is. <laughs> so you see that he's real. This ain't AI. They're going to be like, oh, he made it. It's AI. He paid me to be here. <laughs> I'm not really Asian. What, your name is like Anton or some shit? Joseph. Darrell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, cool. So the example that I was just giving about how your perception is altered. And I think it's imperative that I keep this particular diagram up so you can kind of keep it in mind. Remember, your perception, your perception equals your projection. And when I say perception, I'm talking about the way you look at life. And here's the thing, until you change the way you look at life, life ain't gonna change the way it looks at you. That's a bar, write that down. The, the way you look at life, but more importantly, the meaning you give to life. Because remember, meanings, the meanings that we give to things have emotion. And if I can control your emotion, emotion, sorry, then I can control your energy emotion. If I can control your energy emotion, then I can control your vibration, a singular point of energy. Then that vibration eventually compounds into a frequency. And if I can control your frequency, get down on my knees, pause, that will turn into a reality. So, simple example. Let's say, let's say Jeff. Let's say this is Jeff. I'm gonna give Jeff some muscles. Jeff is currently unemployed. Jeff wants to apply for a job. So because he's unemployed, he has this, he, he was recently fired from his job. So he recently, you know, has this idea that it's going to be hard to get a job. It, it, he's not going to be able to get a job in this particular economy in the world. You know, they're not hiring anybody. They're not giving jobs. So what happens? So Jeff applies for a job. He applies for a job with this preconceived notion that you know, due to the economy and just the way the world is going on and all the layoffs and so on and so forth and recession, this and all of that. He applies for a job. With his perception. With that level of perception, what happens? He gets, he, he gets denied. Then what happens? He applies for another one while still thinking, oh man, you know, fuck, see, like, oh, it's just so hard to get a job. It's just, it's so, it's just so hard. Pause. So then he goes for an interview. And then what happens? He gets denied again. Without realizing it, Jeff has entered the perception projection loop. And what is that sustained by, ladies and gentlemen? Remember, it is sustained by you being right. That feeling, there is nothing more addictive than the feeling of you being right. The artificial ego boost that the ego takes on from the idea that it believes it's right without realizing that it's right only because it believes it's right. <laughs> Once again, if your perception doesn't serve you, it's, not, it's just there to control you. 
So I want you to analyze the way you look at things, the way you look at your life, for example. And it's, this is crazy because, you know, I was talking to a, a recently new client, shout out Julie, it's a pleasure having you. And, you know, we were talking and her perception towards her business, by the way, if you're an entrepreneur who's stuck at a revenue ceiling and you're in a breakout on two to five extra revenue in the next seven weeks, link in the description. But now me and Julie were talking and she had this perception that because of her business's performance, it's because of, you know, the economy in a sense, to simplify it, right? Because of the economy. She had that level of perception. So then when things would happen in her business and she would see a decline, the projection of that reality would then lead to her being like, see, the economy is just, ah, oh, people aren't just buying anymore. People aren't doing this. What we had to do was to completely, my well, pens, push and pee. We had to completely sever that loop for the mere fact that that perception was, just like Jeff, that perception was controlling you. And here's the thing about these ideas. You don't have ideas. Ideas have you. An idea is an entity that exists. Once it's accepted in the mind, it recreates that particular idea to make your mind think it's the truth so that when it happens in your reality, you sustain it from the feeling of being right. Once again, you don't have ideas. Ideas have you. You're not broke. Broke has you, quite literally. And until you're able to analyze your perception, to analyze the way that you're looking at something, to decide if the way that you're looking at it is benefiting you, you will remain trapped in this loop, gassed up by your own BS, quite literally. You want to be so right, you love the feeling of being right so much that you're willing to destroy and limit your potentiality. What's it all worth? You need to be able to analyze the building blocks of your mind because those building blocks have an architect and that architect is going to build those blocks into the world around you. And you have to understand, you have to be able to analyze the way that you're looking at things. So, and this ties in lovely with angel numbers. Don't worry, this ties in lovely. I'm gonna break that down. But for, for now, I just really want you to understand how a lot of people are trapped in this loop. For example, here's the, here's the black curse. The curse of being black. The biggest curse of being black is that life is going to be hard because you're black. That no one wants to give you a job because you're black. That you need to work twice as hard as everybody else because you're black. That no one is going to take you serious because you're black. No one is going to respect you because you're black. Because guess what happens? With that level of perception that feeds into the projection of your reality, so then you actually do have to work twice as hard as everybody else to get half the results because you're black. You come across people that don't take you serious because you're black. You have to work harder than everybody else because you're black. Nigga, the only privilege you ever needed in your life was being a manifestation, the physical expression of God. And you can extrapolate this to whatever you may be. Women deal with the same thing. A lot of my clients are women, and I'm talking seven figure and eight figure entrepreneurs that are still dealing with the curses of what it's perceived as to be a woman. Because then they think, oh, they're not gonna take me serious in this meeting. That level of perception feeds into the projection of that reality. And then the guy makes a weird comment about taking her out and then they're like, fuck, I was right, see? That desire to be right is very, very dangerous. Do you want to be right or in the right reality? He's not in his head. That means I was a bar. He's like, that means it was a bar. That means it was a bar. I was a bar in it. It was a bar stuff. Now, let's take this to angel numbers now because I told you niggas that. I'm gonna help you make your own angel numbers and not be given these angel numbers by these niggas that have 10 different meanings for one number. How the hell does that even make sense? But anyways.
Somebody commented Nero was a cleaner in a past life. <laughs> <laughs> You know, actually, on the topic of past lives, on the topic of past lives, here's one thing that I want you guys to understand. I don't want you guys to get caught up in the idea of past lives for the mere fact that there's a complete contradiction when these so-called spiritual people talk about past lives. They'll tell you that, oh, maybe in a past life this or past life that. I don't know why a past looks that crazy, but... It says past. Come on, don't be that guy. They'll say past life, but then in the same sentence, they'll say time doesn't exist. How can time not exist, but then you say past life? It's for the mere fact that there are no past lives, they're only parallel lives. And as you go into the realm of quantum mechanics, this is what's obviously discussed as the parallel universe theory. In Marvel, they show it to you as the multiverse. It's the idea that there are multiple universes concurrently existing at once. If you think about a highway and, you know, cars are moving down a highway, each lane is side by side, all cars are moving down all at the same time. They're side by side though, different lanes though. That's the same concept of parallel lives. So technically there is no past lives. They're only parallel lives. There's a version of you right now that is under a bridge, homeless. There's a version of you that is a billionaire. There's a version of you that's a chef. There's a version of you that's a teacher. There's a version of you that is Nero <laughs> in your own respective way all happening at the same time. So that's just a little side note. Now, back on topic. And yes, I have to wipe this before I start talking about what I'm talking about. And no, I don't have OCD, like mother's milk in the boys. Have you watched the boys? No, no. You need to watch it, man. Watch like two episodes. No, you need to watch it. You need to watch it. On the topic of angel numbers. So if we pull up our lovely understanding of our perception, and projection loop, here's how angel numbers truly work. You have this preconceived notion that because of this angel number, if you see this number, the way you're looking at the number and the meaning you've attributed to it, which remember, has no meaning other than the meaning that you give it, because the meaning that you give it has an underlying emotion, which then seeks to materialize that underlying thought of what that angel number means. So angel numbers mean nothing. They mean nothing. Zilch, as niggas say. Nothing, except the meaning you give it. Because through that meaning has that emotion, that energy emotion, which turns into a vibration, which compiles into a frequency, which compiles into a reality. Once again, I want you to understand before anything can exist physically, it first must exist vibrationally. Before anything can materialize on the physical plane, it first exists on the mental plane. Before a shadow can be cast, there has to be somebody stood there. When it comes to angel numbers, which is a real craze, you know, people message me be like, hey, Nero, I keep seeing 444. Does that mean my life is going to do this and that's going to do this? No, nigga, but it will if you believe it. And here's the thing. Until you redefine the meaning of your reality, you cannot be the God of your reality because you're going off the meanings that the world has given you. But the world, what the world gives you isn't enough for you to materialize your reality. You need to give yourself from above. This is what the Bible talks about when it says you must be born from above. This is what John says in chapter three when he says a man can receive nothing unless it's given to him from heaven. This is the understanding that Angel numbers mean nothing except the meaning that you give it. For the mere fact that you believe in that meaning. But here's the thing, it's not even about belief. Because you know, because whoever's telling you this has a certain level of authority clearly in your mind, it's a placebo. Reality is the biggest placebo. Niggas are talking about placebos when it comes to physiological and biological instances. But what, a talk, what about physical placebos? Reality 
the entire physical realm is a placebo effect. And if you believe that because this angel number means this, or you know that it's going to know this, it becomes it. These are the meanings that I've seen as to what this number means of itself. So what I did, I went on like 10 different websites just to see what everybody said 444 meant. 444, yeah. And these niggas had different meanings. I thought this was spiritual. How is there different meanings for all of these different things? How can 444 mean three different things across different websites? It's because this means nothing. It means nothing. But if you believe that it means that you're protected by angels, then you will experience a particular reality that reinforces the idea that an occurrence happens that gets you to say, oh, wow, look at that. I'm protected. Something happened, but I was protected. Oh, it means guidance. Oh, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw 444. Look at the time right now. It's 444. Oh, that means that means I'm being guided. And then you receive an intuition that compels you to do something that leads to the materialization of your desired reality. Why are you allowing people to give you meanings? Why don't you give them to yourself? And this is the entire point of what I mean when I say you can make your own angel numbers. I was recently told that I'm a psychopath because I listen to 90s R&B in the gym. Like, I'm literally in the gym, like, listening to, you know, yeah, my days are cold, I don't know, it just makes sense. In the gym, I'm either listening to audiobooks or 90s R&B. There's no in between. Am I, am I a psychopath? You guys let me know, man. Nigga, I'm doing shoulder press while listening to Candy. <laughs> All right, cool. Now, when I'm talking about making your own angel numbers, this ties into the base premise of this entire video, which is the idea that there is no meaning in reality other than the meaning you give it. But because you're unaware of the things you've attributed meaning to, you think that this is what it is. But no, it's simply what it is because you believe that's what it is. And it's also interlinked to the idea, which was actually something I heard years ago from Dr. Delbert Blair, which is the idea that there is no truth in reality other than what the subconscious mind accepts as truth. And I know you guys have asked me before, <clears throat> who are some people that you've learned from? And I, and I said, you know, Homeland is my spiritual teacher or Franklin Saint, you know, when he became a crackhead or, you know, Tyrion Lannister. But to actually give you some actual people, that I've learned from over the years. Of course, I've read hundreds of books. I mean, if you go on my Insta, you'll see my bookshelf and you know, you'll see that there. But actual people, C. Freeman L, these are real OGs. C. Freeman L, Dr. Delbert Blair, Brother Panic, Bobby Hemmett, um, for like Dr. Phil Valentine. I feel like I'm missing some too, but those are the just those are the ones that are coming off the top of my mind. Now when I'm talking about making your own angel number, like I said, it ties into the idea that there is no meaning other than the meaning you give to your reality, but you're unaware of it. And there's no truth other than what the subconscious mind sees as truth. So let's say you see 111, and I don't know what that means because I never fell for that bullshit anyways. But let's say 111 has a particular meaning. I want you to redefine it. I want you to redefine it in a manner that directly 
references your desired reality. And like I said, whenever I read up on these angel numbers, it seems extremely arbitrary. It seems very vague. No, crystal clear clarity is extremely necessary. It is a complete necessity for the materialization of your desired reality. You can't just be like, you're loved. What the hell does that mean? What the hell does that mean? It just makes you feel good. But my purpose is to get you to create your desired reality. So that's the only thing I'm focusing on. So when I, when you see this number, you need to redefine it so it reinforces your desired reality. Now, for most people who aren't bullshitting themselves, one thing people are trying to do is to become wealthy. Now, if you're one of them spiritual niggas who wants to live in the Amazon forest eating berries and that's you, cool. But it ain't me, nigga. Like, I'm not doing that. Now, when I see 111, because this is interconnected directly to my desired reality that is an idea that i reinforce into my mind i've taken something that had a meaning re-altered it to direct that energy from that belief towards my desired reality so when i see one 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 i'm like oh money's about to come in simple why? Because this is one of the particular goals I have. Now, of course, extrapolate this to any other thing, whether it's business, whether you want a partner, whether you want personal characteristics, whether you want a job, whether you want to just materialize something in your life. Make sure it is always interconnected to your desired reality because crystal clear clarity is a necessity because if we understand that before you can materialize anything, you first need to be the vibrational alignment of it. You need to be a resonant of that particular frequency. That particular frequency is in the word that I just said, particular. There's a level of specificity that you have to have when it comes to your desired reality. So what often happens is people aren't crystal clear on what they want. And that sends out a weak signal to the universe because it can't really pick up what it is that you want. But when you know exactly what you want, how you want it, so on and so forth, and reference your desired reality to that. And you can do this with all types of shit. And this doesn't just stop at angel numbers, nigga. You can do this when you see a pair of shoes, you're like, ah, oh, this means this. When you see a car, this means this. Anything that equates to your desired reality, the meaning that you give behind to things that have no meaning. When it rains, that means money is about to rain into my account. Extrapolate this to every aspect because until you redefine your reality, you can't be the God of your reality.